Hi, everybody, and happy Friday. Welcome back to another edition of Mortgage Coach Insane Productivity. And I'm happy. Um, Dave, Dave has a conflict, so this is Jennifer, and I'm uh, getting us started here today. And um, today we have Dave uh, Gallegos, and we also have uh, Michelle. Michelle, I can't remember your last name. Brown? Town. Like uptown, no, up. I, I was close. I was close. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, Michelle, Michelle, and Dave and I are going to do our best to uh, bring you, you know, forty-five minutes or so of, uh, and maybe an hour, depending on how the conversation goes. But uh, some, you know, powerful um, continuing tools and some new things that you guys would like to bring up as well to, uh, you know, help you be insanely productive. That's what it's really about. So, um, again. As Dave says every week, you know, this is only as good as um, your interaction. So we really encourage you to um, post questions, ask us questions so that we are not, raise your hand and I'll um, get you unmu unmuted. Um, so that it's not just a discussion between the three of us that you're just listening in on. Uh, we really want this to be interactive and especially since um, Dave's really good at keeping it going, we need your help, okay? So hopefully you all can agree to do that. So, um, Dave, you know, last week you and I were on the call together, mm -hmm. and we talked about um, a little bit about the CRMs, which I haven't seen anyone post any of their recordings, so I want to encourage people to do that, uh, to uh, do some recording and, and post it up there for us. And I apologize because I was supposed to do that, and then I started to, and I went, wow, um, since I'm not originating anymore, I'm not real good at this. And so I'm going to get one of my guys, I'm going to get one of my guys, because we're always updating, I'm going to get one of my guys to uh, record it for me. Actually, we have something, I have some things that we can upload, so I'll, I'll start doing that. I did add my, what we track, and um, yeah, that was great. Thank you. Loan officer that, uh, what loan officers get every day from us uh, in our system, so I added that, but. Um, I, yeah, so that I, was I, wonderful. No, 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 that's okay. So again, if you're listening in here and you have a CRM that you are just absolutely in love with, please do a recording um, of how you use it, you know, and how you how you maneuver through it, so that we don't have to listen to a salesperson give us one. I think it, you know the application of it, the implementation is just much more important. Um, and then we went on to tracking, and so there are a lot of tracking um, forms. I loaded up some. Um, I know that you did, Dave, and then I think somebody else loaded up something, or maybe it was just the two of us. <laughs> I think so. Michelle, now that, now that you're on the call, we'd love to see what you use for tracking as well. So if you have any Excel spreadsheets or anything that comes out of your CRM that you use for tracking, we'd love to see what you have. So would you mind telling us how you, you do some of your tracking so that we can hear a little bit more about it before you post something? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. Sorry I've been absent for a couple days or a couple weeks. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, um, I, um, I'll just generally say I made a move last, the last two weeks um, in companies, and I, this is going to tie into tracking your CRMs and everything. And I will tell you, although it, the change is hard, my data, my CRM, nothing stopped, um, which is incredible. So I was able to take my pretty big desk and move it to another company and within a week our CRM was up and running and um, we didn't have any um, any really lag time so that tells you how important that CRM is and tracking. Um, I use um, Big Purple Dot. Um, I've, I've used that because I love it for a reminder system and I'm able to track and watch the metrics of how many of my emails are open, um, how many of my salespeople are calling, um, what our results are, whether we're, we're going to, you know, application or whether we're going to a, what we call not ready yet, um, or whether or not, you know, we have another column that we call closed and lost, which we, we do a follow-up campaign on. So um, that's what I use. I'm happy to share it. And I was telling Jen, I'm, I'm down this weekend because I had surgery on Tuesday, so I can't do anything except for work, which is great. So I'll be happy to share some wonderful things. Sounds good. Purple, big purple dot, right? Want Correct. to make sure that we got the name of that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put that in here so that we, so that we have um, access, access to um, being at least able to look it up. So hopefully you can. Now, are you going to change CRMs when you move companies? Or are you going to you're going to keep big purple dot? 
I will keep always keep Big Purple Dot. Um, I was just telling Jen earlier that I just signed up for Django. Um, they have a couple of things that Big Purple Dot doesn't have, so I'm t beta testing it right now. Um, so I'll be able to report back more on that probably in about 30 days to see if it does what I want. But Big Purple Dot pretty much does what I like. It also has a texting campaign, which was really important for me. Um, I um, have on Big Purple Dot, one of the attractions to me was that it allows me to set up a drip text campaign, which is beautiful. So it helps me out tremendously awesome. with um, time and managing the Okay, time. awesome. All right, so you're going to find that Django does that too when you start getting in there, when you do your, your, um, your testing. You'll be able to do that in there too. So we'll have to find out which one's going to be easier. Okay, so that sounds good. So if you, you know, if you both could do that, um, that would be wonderful. And so, what I what I thought we would do is, you know, we started with the CRM. We start and then we started tracking. So and these things are all important for productivity. But I thought what we would do today is just move into unless ever unless anyone has a specific um, question. I don't have anyone's hand um, raised right now. But if anyone has a specific question that they'd like to address today. Um, I'd love I'd love to hear from you so that we could, you know, start talking about that subject or that topic. But in the absence of no no one's hands being raised right now, and I may call on you in a few minutes, so be prepared. Um, I thought maybe we would move into metrics. You know, is we've got our CRM, we've got some tracking tools, but now how do we set up a metrics so that we can ensure that everyone um, on your team, if you have a team, and those that, that are working independently or with a loan officer assistant, how do we measure um, that we're uh, abiding by or, you know, completing the tasks that we, uh, the metrics that we set out? And one of the things that Michelle and I were talking about, Dave, before you uh, joined the call, was that you can easily say, you know, my expectation or my metrics uh, is that my processor uh, submits a loan to underwriting within uh, three or five days of, of getting the file. Okay, so that's a metrics, but really it's a goal unless there's a way to measure it, right? So what, right. what are some of the tools that you, you all use to measure what is set out to be a metrics or a goal. What are some of the ways that you do that? Well, I'll give you an, an example of what we're using. I'm, I, I kind of feel like I have, because that was always something that you struggle with. You're doing these pipeline reports and everything else, and it just, you know, it starts to get a lot of pretty cumbersome. We became a Motivity, Motivation customer uh, two and a half or three years ago. And so in Colorado, there's something called a loan objection deadline by which the loan has to be cleared to close. Or the customer's earnest money is going hard, and if for some reason it doesn't close after that, then they could their their earnest money is at risk. And so that's to us, that's the day we have to be clear to close. It's 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 called the loan objection deadline, but it just means that the customer can object to the terms of the loan if they can't get the loan they wanted, and they can get get out of the contract. That said, I get a report every morning. This is how we measure these things. So we get a report. Like I get an email, and so does the processor and the operations manager, I get an email every morning telling me if there's any loans that are cleared, that are scheduled to be cleared to close that day that currently aren't. Um, so we use that tool to measure all of that stuff and that, so and I can get an alert like that or um, we're also using it to just keep track in the branch how we, um, uh, how we, um, how we're doing in, for instance, I can, and the monitor's just up on the walls in our office, so I can see how many days or how many hours the file's been in underwriting, right? So we count hours in underwriting because I want to measure it by every eight hours, like how many hours, like, you know, did it get turned over when it was supposed to, did yeah. it get submitted when it was supposed to, um, and, and we're able to measure that on a branch-wide basis, and then everybody's seeing everybody else's numbers, so there's just a lot, it's a lot more of a concise way, you can't hide. And not that you know people hide, but every now and then people hide, and so um, they're not able to because we're tracking it. In, so there's like a visual, there's a visual dashboard with those metrics. How many days between? So how many days is it taking us to get a file from application to operations? Right. So our our goal is if it's locked today, it's in it's in underwrite, it's in process, it's over to the operations department within 24 hours. What no matter what time today it was within 24 hours. It's got to get off the loan officer's desk because that 
can be like the big, you know, that can be one of those areas where things just take longer than they have to. Just get it turned over and then um, we want it disclosed within 24 hours of that. We want it um, and then it's just how everybody's got a different system for all of this. So it's just that we track all of those, whatever our metrics, because you're right. Otherwise, it's just a goal. And are you doing yeah. it? And it is difficult to measure if you don't have the processes and systems in place. And the reason we went to Motivity is we were doing all of this on spreadsheets before, which is mind numbing, obviously, because you've got all these printing out a new pipeline report every few days to try to update everything and or seeing it in, in Compass or in Compass Company. And so um, uh, this just overlays over both our CRM and our, uh, uh, our, our LOS. And that's what that software does is it extracts data from both to give us those reports like the one I showed you on, um, on uh, how we track for the loan officers. Right, right. And, and our company... Yeah, and our company uses Motivity as well on top of Encompass, so that's our LOS, so we, we have right. the ability to do that as well, yeah. So does anybody else have a system that they use in their company that, that you could share with us? You can post it on here on the on the um, uh, the Insane Productivity Mortgage Coach website or uh, Facebook page. We'd love to hear what, what other um, processes you're using, at least for in tandem with the LOS. But let me move to Michelle for a second. So Michelle... Um, that helps us when we have a loan in process. What what kind of metrics are you using to help your team work together so that um, you create what I call and on my team is we want to make sure we have you know safety among our, our members that they feel safe to be able to um, say you know offer suggestions for better ways to improve things that they feel safe to to offer um, feedback that we have respect for one another so that we don't have resentment. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons, well, I know it is, it's one of the reasons why we set up metrics is, is to ensure that we had the respect. And that, of course, leads to trust. So we're always looking for those three things on my team is, you know, are we? Are, does everybody feel safe? Does everyone respect one another? And do we trust one another? And when I look at even the responsibility of myself as a team leader, is um, my my mortgage planner cannot effectively do her job unless I do a few things that are really really important and one of them is 100% of the clients that I talk to I do an audio debrief so that my mortgage planner has all of the information otherwise she can't do her job well I, and I could type up a letter but it takes me too long so um, I, and I like to do the invoice inflection and, and things like that but what can we do outside of the context of what our LOS or Motivity or any other system provides for us to ensure that each one of us in our wheelhouse is doing everything possible to make the next person's job easy as well? So I'm probably not as I'm listening to this. I'm not as structured as you guys are. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit less structured. I mean, I we get structure at the very beginning where we have I, my my team consists of three people. So we have an opener, a um, uh, processor, and a closer. Um, so and we everybody's cross trained, which was really important to me, so that if one person was out, we didn't stop. Um, we have daily meetings every morning at 10:30 um, to go over the pipeline. Um, sometimes I'm in on that. Sometimes I'm not. And then we also have um, at the end of a transaction, we go over on Fridays, we'll go over the closings for that week and we'll go over the pros and cons of every file. Um, like, you know, what did we do great? What can we, what can we improve on? Um, and we are, we're very open-minded. Every single person on my team is empowered to make a decision. So I don't know if that makes, if that's what you're asking for, but I, I let them, I rather them make a decision and make the wrong one than not make a decision at all. And what I've done by allowing them to be able to make the decisions and not have to wait for me, um, I've given them the, you know, I've basically given the authority to make any decision on a file, um, with the exception of breaking a lock, obviously. Um, but <laughs> right. I don't have, I don't have, um, I, I, I really, part of my hiring process is to make sure that that person is a fit if they're a gossiper, if they are anybody that points a finger, if they're not um, understanding how a team works, um, we'll 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 give we'll try to coach them up. But I will coach them out faster than I'll coach them up. If I notice in the first two weeks that this is not a fit, I, I let them go immediately because I don't 
I can't have toxic people in my, my team because we, we work so well together. And um, we have metrics that we do. We, our, our goal is probably similar to Dave's, which is ours is 48 hours. Anytime anything hits the 48-hour mark, it goes red on our, our Excel. We use Excel right now. I don't, I'm going to look at Motivity, though. We use Excel. It goes red on our Excel sheet. And um, that's, that's the first things we talk about in our meeting. And I think because we have a meeting every morning, very rarely does anything get to a 48-hour mark without me already knowing what's going on with it. Um, but the team is, you know, our, our concept is, you know, if something goes wrong, it's, everybody has a, has a part in it, and we talk about it. And I think that that really helps when you don't put blame or there's no resentment on somebody because every, everybody is cross-trained. So somebody is buried. Let's say I bring in, you know, 10 loans in one day. My opener is going to ask for help openly, and my, my prospector right. is going to openly offer help to say, what can I do to help you? I know you're overwhelmed today. So right. um, I, we just have a really good team dynamics, and you know I can't tell you that we don't have problems because we do, but we address them right away. We don't let them fester, and I'm really good at listening to them. I've learned to be an incredible listener over the last few years. And I listen and I watch body language, and they, I can tell when something's going wrong. And I'll and if they won't bring it up in the meeting, I'll bring it up. So I, right. I would say that's what we do. We just bring everything up to the front immediately. That's that. That's just reminding me. And and you know, what what's really hard about Jennifer? You probably agree with me. Um, and Michelle, you probably will too. But one of the most difficult things for people to do is build a team. Really good producers aren't. I think pre-wired for the most part to being a team builder, and um, uh, I, at least that's been my experience. And we really try to focus on it and help guys build their teams and focus on leadership and everything else. And the things that you're doing, it's so true. It's not. Um, it's about the communication, and it's reminding me of an article that I just googled and I'll post it. That uh, was out. Google, what Google learned from its quest to build the perfect team. And it's all, it's, it is not going to be what you think. It's going to be what you were just talking about. It's um, uh, how the team communicates. And does everybody feel comfortable talking? <laughs> does everybody feel comfortable sharing what they're thinking? Because if there's one person who's like the dominant one and everybody else is just afraid to share, then, and which sounds like a lot of top producers, right? Um, it's very difficult to build a team that trusts each other, and without trust, the team isn't going to be. It's not going to be a high-functioning team. Right, bingo, and that and that's that safety that I was talking about. Exactly well. right. You know? and so um, and so you talked in the high. Well, let me let me ask. Um, can you unmute Bliss for us, and ask Bliss what she's doing? Because you know, Bliss, you've been. Um, there you are. Hey. How are you? How are Good you? Thing. Good. Great. You know, you, you've mentioned a couple of times, you know, some of the things that you're working on, um, you know, to up-level your business and your team and your practice. So, you know, as oh. you're listening to this, what are, what's, what are some of the things that are going through your mind as it relates to how you can be more productive and how your team can be more productive? So, um, I think it's critical what you guys just said is that building a team is probably one of the toughest things that you can do. And I put it off for a long time. I had you know, I tried it a couple times. You didn't get the right person in there. Anyways, I feel like I have a great team now, but it's not its not this perfect path to greater production, right? It's got so many twists and turns. And whatever you decide to measure, if you were talking about metrics, just know that's going to evolve over time. It's, as well as, like, responsibility and roles within the team, it's going to evolve. So how it looks today is not how it's going to look every six months. We reevaluate our metrics every month when we kind of set our goals. And so what do we want to track? It's, it's now pretty much staying the same every time because we feel pretty good about where we are. But so, for example, in the month of May, my processor, at the uh, I was gone for about 10 days, and we had some really tough deals. And at the end of the month, she's like, you know what? I didn't have time to, to track stuff. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Because we set a goal with a reward, I said, um, "Work. Everybody earns the reward because you guys did some amazing stuff." I didn't even care about the numbers for the month of May, because what they did while I was out of town was literally a miracle. 
we just have that tough of some situations. And so sometimes you throw it out the window, right? And then we regroup and we set some our goals for June. And so it's be, you've got to be really flexible. And remember you're working with humans who sometimes get their feelings hurt, who sometimes have a bad day, sometimes they have personal issues. And so, um, Michelle, you know, I like a lot of what you're saying about that team trust and communication. And there's going to be times when, you know, maybe I come across very um, rigid or um, intense, right? Because that's just part of me getting stuff done. But I have to be sensitive that that might put them in a little bit of an uncomfortable spot at times too. So we all have our personality strengths and weaknesses that we have to be working on through all of this, through tracking, but also just that communication. My uh, assistant, she and I meet, sometimes it's, it's like three minutes, right? We just have, hey, do you have anything on your list? Do you have anything on your list? Let's talk through some of the highlights. And so every day we, we have that face-to-face -face time. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think, uh, you know, it's very important that um, as we're talking about laying out metrics is that it's not, it, that it isn't cast in stone. It's the same as your perfect loan process. This is an, a living, breathing document that changes, you know, with the market. It changes with technology. It changes with certain times of the year, right? And, you know, I think it's great that you were able to go away for 10 days. And, you know, and I'm sure when you all meet for July, you're going to be saying, you know, what or June that you have met, and you'll be saying, you know, that because you were gone, that created an opportunity for us to redirect and get back on track and not drift so much away in an area that was probably covered by you that perhaps wasn't cross-trained, you know, as Michelle was talking about earlier. So this will always be evolving, but we have to start somewhere. The key is to, is to start the communication and start um, the expectations with your team and with yourself you know, we have to, I, I was just, um, <laughs> I was just at Mastermind in Las Vegas. I think a lot of you know that, you know, I was out there speaking and there was, uh, we were able to, um, uh, one of the main, main speakers was Jack Canfield who wrote um, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And he has a great quote from Theodore Roosevelt that I uh, took a snapshot of and I've been sort of using all week, you know, long since I've been back. And um, what he says is, if you could kick the person in the pants responsible for most of your trouble, you wouldn't sit for a month. And uh, so we have to make sure that nice. we're not finger pointing. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, sort of like looking in the mirror, right? So if so, we don't want to make sure we're not finger pointing at anything. Even if you don't have a team, please don't finger point, thumb point. You know, point at yourself and say, how can I adjust to this? How can I be um, responsive rather than reactive? You know, when you're when you're working with your team, you know, if someone uh, drops the ball and there's a little leak and something. So even though we're talking about, you know, communicating sort of in the downward motion, we want to make sure that we recognize that we're part of this team. We may be the lead, but but at the end of the day, we're one of the wheels in this team. And if we're not being um, as proactive and communicative as everyone else, then we have problems. And we have to just make sure that, that we're also doing self-analysis and, and ensuring that we're up-leveling ourselves, you know, on a daily basis to make sure that we're doing what we can to help our team be successful. Um, I wanted to ask you something, Bliss, if I can just keep you on for, oh, oh, did you go back on to mute? I think she did. Bliss? I'm back. Yeah. Hey, sorry. So can I can I ask you a question? And I think maybe others might be asking the question and, and not raising their hand sure. or maybe it went over everybody. But um tell me about your rewards. What are you what are you doing for your team oh, sure. to earn the rewards? I'd like to hear about that. Absolutely. And actually I thought of one other thing that you mentioned that um my experience you mentioned oh, that when you're gone your team sometimes learns things they wouldn't learn otherwise. That's exactly what my team said is having me gone gave them so many more experiences of things I would have covered if I'd been here. So give your team that opportunity to jump in that and solve those problems. Yeah, because yeah. when I'm here, I take care of the big stuff, right? I, I'm not, I don't ever expect them to make that call saying, oh, by the way, you know, the underwriter hates your loan, right? That's right. my job to make that call, but they had to do that and solve those problems. It was great. Um, so we take a look at 
um, what what we we track pretty much kind of the same things. We track as far as marketing goes, we're tracking our increase in social media as far as on Instagram and Facebook. That's my production manager. Thank yous or testimonials. So that's kind of underneath her. Then my my processor. She with her we track um, number of days from the time the file gets pushed to her to the time it goes to underwriting and the number of conditions um, prior to prior to closing conditions and and then on my from myself I'm tracking my phone calls and texts outbound unsolicited and uh, of course credit pulls applications that kind of thing and so the type of the type of rewards we've done. We have that we have this amazing little store called Charming Charlie's. I don't know if anyone else has it. Oh it's yeah, I think of, everybody knows <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. So one one month I'm like, all right, we're doing lunch in Charming Charlie's, and we went there, and I'm like, all right, you know what? Uh, I, I think we did 25 bucks each. You know, just buy a new purse, or I don't know, maybe we did more than that, something like that. Um, so we've done lunch. I'm actually for June because I'm going to be gone another 10 days the 1st of July. I'm actually giving them each a massage with a local company. Um that's going to be their reward for June. And we have talked about um going bowling. We've gone to a movie, late afternoon movie. And so we just try to make it something fun. Normally it will be something that we do together because I want that fun team building reward for working so hard. That's great. And so each one of them has their own their own compartmentalized uh, metrics that they need to be doing and you set up, so for example, with social media, maybe you set up something that says, you know, I have uh, 10 friends and if we hit the goal of having 20 friends by the end of the month, then you're going to get a reward. So yeah, everything has correct? a point value. So basically, mm -hmm. we get um, she gets one point for every five new likes um, uh -huh. or whatever on, on social media, and one point for every testimonial or thank you note that we get. And so, and then every month we set a goal of you know 75 points, but it's cumulative. So I have to do my part. And yeah. like for for June, I have gone above and beyond on my numbers because I was gone for 10 days in May. I'm gone for 10 days in July. So I'm just really, really stepping up my phone calls and my realtor lunches, all of those things. So even if their points are down a little bit in June, they're still going to meet our target and they're still going to get the reward. Awesome. Um, and yeah, so that's how I do it. I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. So, you know, hopefully those, those that are listening in here can, can, you know, see that I think what happens is that we get so involved in doing loans and at the end of the month we say, okay, that, that month's over, now let's do it all again and we're not um, rewarding everyone as maybe as often as we should or expressing gratitude and that's one of the things that that um, uh, Darren loves to talk about is, you know, what are your gratitudes on a daily basis? But I think it's great to sort of roll them all up into a monthly version of that and really express gratitude uh, you know, on a monthly basis, and I so I really love that you shared that with us. Thank you so much. Um, is there anybody else who would like to share how they reward? Um, and while we're waiting for a hand to raise, or I'm going to start calling on people. Uh, Dave, what's going on in your branch that people are? What are they doing to reward and um, reward their team members? This is it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm thinking about how bad I am or how bad I've been. I think I've gotten a lot better, but uh, there's always room for improvement of celebrating success. Yeah. Because you're right. We get to the end of a month, and Ooh, it's um, done. And then, <laughs> and 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 probably for a lot of people, if you're anything like me, a new record month is depressing because you. Th I, it's not depressing, but it's always like, well, we could have done more. And and yeah. you know, just you think about that one you didn't do. And um, uh, something my dad told me because I called him once. I, I this was several many years ago, and it was a record July. And it was a record month for us. It was a big. It was a new high for the branch for the month. And I called him and said, "Hey, we've got a new month." He goes, "That's awesome! Congratulations!" I go, "Yeah. Why don't I feel better about it?" <laughs> and he goes, "Right." He goes, "Because you're just you're wired like I, he was a pretty successful businessman." And he goes, "Because you're wired the same way I am." He goes, "You got to be careful because you're going to burn everyone around you. They'll burn out because you're never satisfied and you're never celebrating. You're not because you have to remember to celebrate, never be satisfied, but always celebrate your successes. And you don't have to, you don't have to be satisfied and that's dangerous to get satisfied because then you start to you can go backwards. Um, so 
we've gotten to where we have we make a big deal out of a new record month and um, uh, for both you know because I, I got a pretty good pretty good sized group but for both the sales team and the operations team uh, we'll do celebratory dinners um, and then we're doing something where four times a year everybody's getting together to celebrate we're not doing anything specific measurable like what bliss has it dialed in good, good job because it's really dialed in based on some specific metrics on a monthly basis we're not there um, but um, as a group we try to have a uh, let's let's try to get to know each other on a personal level beyond just the job by doing things as a group so we'll be doing a Rockies you know not that I'm a Rockies man because they're I don't I hate them but they're but we'll be doing a Rockies game right and we'll just take everybody we're gonna get a suite this time instead of uh, we've sat in the cheap seats before but like well let's get a suite they're not that expensive and it'd be really a nice thing and have people bring their families and stuff so um, just in that way is what we've done we haven't gotten as we haven't gotten as dialed into it but we try to do one something once a quarter as a group I think that's I think that's great and you know that's a more high level version of it right so Bliss has a team and then this is more of a branch version of it so you know the ability to be able to share different concepts that that people are utilizing um, to do it. you know and I, here's the thing when you said about celebrating that you're not happy you know and insane productivity and and maybe um, one of you could look this up while we're talking about this because I can't remember which module it's in but um, you know where Darren talks about the journey you know, and not being dissatisfied when we get there. There was a whole section, I just can't remember it right now, but there's a whole section on um, th that dissatisfaction that we have when we finally make a million dollars, you know, and you finally, someone says, I want to have a million dollars in my bank account, and you make it, and you're dissatisfied because you didn't enjoy the journey there, um, and, and that's part of the productivity um, challenges that we have is that, you know, we either uh, don't make it and we get unproductive, or we do make it to that level and then we sort of sit back and we're satisfied and then we don't want anything else so we have to remember that that just happens to be a milestone in a bigger picture that we're trying to do so if we hit a million in a bank account now it's just well, how 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 did that feel what do we what do we accomplish and now how can we get to the next level it's not a stop you know a, a hard stop so I want to make sure everybody but he sees that, and and I and I can only express this through my own experience. I, I think you all know that I'm writing a book. Well, I'm done, finally done. But you know, it was such a letdown when it was done because I thought, well, I could have added this, and I should have added <laughs> instead of just celebrating the fact that I have something that's going out there to the world, right? And so I can, it, you know, talk about that through my own experience, and uh, it challenged me, and I was so upset with myself because. Because I was writing in my my Darren Hardy Jr. Uh, Darren Hardy uh, journal, and I thought, you know, I didn't even write that I was finished with my book. I was just like, it's finished, but you know, I could have written more things, and I scribbled that out, took it out, and said, no, that's not what I want to say. It's finished, and now I can move on. Um, so I just wanted to share that with everyone because I want I do think that we want to, you know, always make sure that we're talking about insane productivity and how we could go back into this, this. Um, manual, all the manuals that we have, and really look at them on a regular basis, guys. We don't want to just be going through these modules and then never looking at them again. And Dave, you've, I think you've been through it a couple times. Michelle, have you been through it a couple times yet? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. I know. And I learn, I learn yes. something new every time. I say that was not written here before. I swear it wasn't mm -hmm. there. <laughs> I, you know, it's whatever we want to. Um, you know, pull back out. So, so can we unmute um, Rick Gary? So we can ask Rick what he thinks about what we're talking about, rather than all of us yakking here. Or did he just hang up on us because I called him out? <laughs> no, Rick. All right. How about uh, Felisa? There we go. I'm a little Lisa? bit different. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, I can. Hi. I am a little bit different in that I am not the actual uh, team leader. I am my team leader's production partner. Um, so well, congratulations for being on the call. That's awesome for oh. you to be on it. That brings up a good point. Why don't we all have our team on these calls, huh? 
so yeah, so tell us a little bit about from your perspective how that how um, the measuring of mat metrics is and celebrations and your productivity is for your team. We have um, what are called KPIs, um, uh, which are set established by the company, but then we also have our own set um, of metrics uh, that we utilize on our team. Um, our team consists of a total of four. Uh, um, people and uh, uh, you know we we're measuring the number of leads that we're receiving we're measuring um, what's being converted um, the percentage of conversions um, measuring things such as time to uh, push a file into processing um, how long how long is that taking um, and then we are not reviewing things on a weekly basis as far as the pros and cons for, for loans that have closed that week, but we do, um, the next month, we have a team meeting where we all get together and we discuss all of the loans that closed uh, the previous month and the pros and cons on those. And then uh, we make it a point at the beginning of each of the meetings um, to celebrate and acknowledge accomplishments um, of our uh, fellow team members. Excellent. Excellent. Any comments, Michelle or Dave? Um, Dave? We, those KPI, I'm glad you said that. That's really what that motivity system can do for you, but um, the, uh, uh, it's important. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people, you know, when you take it to the level where you're going to measure and that's, it's, it's people who measure things get things done. People who track can actually produce. And so, um, and having a key performance indicator that just says, you know, one of ours is, you know, the file gets turned over within 24 hours. Um, cause we have, we have contracts. I know the rest of the countries is our markets really moving fast and, and, um, we had some short closing times, and and so those the, the days of us telling a customer, yeah, give me that application back within a, with, you know within the next seventy two hours, and like like why would you tell them that? You want it tomorrow? So <laughs> so it's just right. coming up with ways that we can just you know hold uh, and a key performance indicator is getting that application back in twenty four hours from the customer, and so because uh, we know if we can do those things we can just move the process along we, we can eliminate the delays and the slack in the system so um, and that's how you do it with key performance indicators so good job yeah excellent and thank you thank you so much for sharing we appreciate I know I called on you but I appreciate your contribution there Felisa very much is there anybody else who'd like to comment on what they're using or have a new question that they'd like to um, have us address or have the whole group address and while that, while you're raising your hand and asking to be chirping in here, um, I, I'd like to talk about uh, halftime. Uh, we're coming up, you know, the end of June, and so now we're halfway through the year. What are what are you all doing to assess where you stand um, and where you want to go? You know, this is the perfect time to go into the locker room, and if you're losing. Win, start figuring out how you're going to win, start strategizing how to win, and if you're winning, how are you going to keep that game going? So can you share with us, um, Michelle, maybe, and you guys are in a different position because you just moved your office, so everything's kind of moving pretty quickly, but do you um, have a plan for having a halftime um, uh, you know, meeting or strategy session with everybody to relook at your business plan? Excuse me, your business plan? Well, our halftime is a little bit different because of the switch of companies. So the beautiful thing of switching with companies is that you kind of get to reset all the mess that you left at the old company. So um, we are actually being able to reset everything. I mean, all of our metrics, everything start all over as far as the loans that are in process because all the other ones are closing out. Um, I kind of a fresh start on that aspect as far as leads and thank you cards and things that we're doing, that stuff is still being measured and um, we kind of took our eye off the ball a little bit because the move was a pretty significant and wasn't a sudden move because I knew I was doing it for 60 days, but it's still, it's a move. And so we're adapting to a new culture, a new lifestyle, and so we are not going to, we agreed not to do any metrics until September or October because we wanted to give us 90 days to get settled in. 
Right. Um, and Dave, what happens in your company? Are your are your loan officers and your teams are they all um, having is planning to have some type of a strategy meeting to sort of um, I don't want to say reset because it's not a reset, but it, but it is to a certain extent. You know, it um, it's a great strategy session. You know, on you know where the weaknesses are. So the, the redoing the SWAT system again. You know, our strengths, weakness, the opportunities, and and um, timelines. So, what are what are some of the things that your your uh, different teams are doing in your office? Um, well, as far as everybody's got you know their goals and their their plans and then we set them up at the beginning of the year and and um, uh, and then so I've got one guy with three other team members that's the biggest team that we have he's our, our biggest producer and um, some of the things that in are I mean and I'm not sure he's consistent with it which is a problem but um, meeting monthly uh, as a team and then meeting one-on-one -on -one with each team member is something that um, as the leader of the team he's got to do and um, I do know that they're getting they're very disciplined about um, a daily huddle which is something that I think a lot of teams can benefit from and it's something that we've instituted at the management level here so there's a daily huddle um, uh, you know, we followed a system that we did we got out of Patrick Lencioni's book death by meeting where there's a weekly you know there's daily huddle and then there's a weekly you know strategy meeting but it's not um, and that's for the management team on the loan officer level I think it's important that those as long as they're doing their daily huddles because their business is so fluid and if they're busy and you got three team members so you're probably pretty busy um, ideally um, uh, that they're just the communication is happening right like everybody knows what's going on everybody knows what everybody's working on um, where <clears throat> It is, I think, one of the biggest challenges that a lot of top producers have is building that team because it involves a whole, you know, it's like a, when I started this branch, it was, I had to go from being an originator to somebody who's running a branch, and it's two different skills. I admire people who can do both. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, I'll share with you what, what, um, what uh, we, do. we take a day, uh, we'll be doing this um second I think or third week of July we'll take a full day and that gives me enough time to do analysis of you know um, running me metrics and having all of our numbers together take a, a full day to do a half half time report and we do it off-site it's a big brainstorming um, opportunity we look at you know what we thought we were gonna do uh, maybe we were gonna have a couple of client appreciation parties and they sort of went by the wayside because uh, we had you know in Michelle's case we, we maybe moved a company or we got too busy where we just had to put it on the back burner um, or maybe uh, you know we learned of a new strategy or learned uh, you know if something is we're listening to these meetings you know there's all kinds of ideas that are coming out and I put them in parking lots and I don't implement them necessarily until we meet as a team and see if it's something that we want to do and we feel that our ROI is going to be good, you know, by doing that activity. And so maybe that's where we start implementing that, and we start making some changes to our PLP um, at halftime. We're finding out what what's working, what isn't, and some of those changes might be because our company makes changes to maybe a CRM or to some of the drip campaigns or the process, and now we need to adapt to them. So we perhaps did that on the fly in the beginning, and now we're reincorporating that and making sure that we're going to finish the year strong and figuring out what exactly we, we need to do. But I think it's important to do it off-site um, in preparation for what, because I don't know about you guys, come October, which is just a couple of months from now, we're already going to be looking at our strategies and our business plan for 2018. So this is our opportunity to make any halftime adjustments to ensure that we um, win the game. You know, at the end, at the end of the day, we end, win the game. Decide if we need to have um, maybe another person on our team to help fulfill a gap that we have. So, I just encourage everyone to think about uh, putting together some type of a, a halftime analysis, even if you're doing it on your own, where you just go away, where there's no phones, and, and think about all the things that you want to implement. You know, in the next uh, six months, uh, ramp up. You know, change K I B uh, K P I S. You know. To uh, to upscale and up level yourself. Um, so I wanted to call on Ed. Are you are you there, Ed? Yes, I am. 
Hi. Okay. So what are you thinking about based on everything that we've talked about? We've talked about CRMs and tracking and metrics and celebrating and what are some of your thoughts that you could share with us? Well, A, I, I don't have a team yet. I just uh, we just made a move. I moved to Sierra Pacific and they have a uh, CRM that's I was just looking at it and doesn't quite do the things that I want to do and I, I wanted to pose a question. Has anybody does um, anybody that when you make a move, the issue seems to be if you're using the company's CRM base that they own the the uh, content content. So, has anybody ever used uh, independent of their company's CRM, their own CRM? That's what I was contemplating because I hear the okay. I hear the um, as David's talking about some of the um, things that the CRM will do and track and measure. Ours doesn't. It's somewhat limited and so I was wondering if it would be, behoove me to look into creating something separate. Yeah, but, I think, yeah, I have some thoughts, but Michelle, why don't you answer that question since you just made the move and you said that you still have um, Big Purple Dot. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, are you there? She might have, she might have left us, perhaps, or her her throat is sore. Um, so uh, I I use Django, um, Salesforce with the Django overlay. I use that, and um, I've brought it with me to very to three or four different companies over the last eighteen years. Um, I feel it's important for me to know who my clients are and be able to contain the data for me. Right. Um, and I am a branch manager, so you know I certainly understand, um, you know, the thought the thought behind it. Um, you know, ultimately, your company is going to have your contact inf the contact information because you'll have it in the LOS. The question right. is whether or not you know you want to have a separate uh, a separate system. I came to the company that I'm at now uh, with them knowing that I have my own system. In fact, all the all the companies that I went to, um, and I've not had any issues with that. I mean, you know, when you leave, uh, they have your database. Um, I have your database. If you leave me, I have your database, and it's just a, a decision on the company as to whether or not they want to market, you know, to that database. I feel that if I have my own, um, I can I can be ahead of the curve with that. Uh, to ensure that I'm protecting as many clients as I as I possibly can, but but that wasn't the driving force behind Salesforce or Django. I still call it Salesforce. That wasn't the driving force behind it. The driving force behind it for me was a productivity, was productivity, being able to to measure what I wanted to measure, being able to have all of the data um, about a client stored in one location. And now that we have Mortgage Coach Edge. Uh, integrated into Salesforce, it's wonderful because all of our our Edge reports are in there as well. Um, so for me, it was it was a means uh, to an end communication. Uh, so I think where would this would start with me if I were you is what exactly do you want more than what don't they have? Uh, if they don't have certain pieces of it, is it really something you want or is Something that you heard everybody else uses, so you feel like you're being left out. That isn't it called FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would I would really analyze what it is you really want from your CRM before you start going out and looking, you know, at another CRM. Salesforce for me was how do I notify the borrower and notify the realtors about every milestone before they call me because right. when they call me it's a defensive call and it takes 20 minutes for me to answer versus me just pushing the information out and it's positive and it lets them go on their merry little way in, in making them productive as well. That's where Salesforce came in for me. I'm, it's I'm, now I'm yeah. thinking in terms of leads like from the very, I'm trying to do, I'm working on partnerships with uh, agents and then so I'm following up on all of their leaves that they get from Zillow and we're partnering so 
um, I'm wanting to track those, and I want them to integrate with a CRM and put the information in. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so that that would be the number one priority for you with any CRM you're looking at is when I have a because um, it would be like a CSV file, right, or CV, CVS, CV, CSV right. file that comes out of Zillow. Can I upload that quickly into the C CRM and tag it pro appropriately so that very, very quickly, within 24, way within 24 hours because of Zillow leads, can I act on them? How quickly can I act on them? I, I know Salesforce does that. So, um, but you want to look at you know all the others as well, especially you know you're coming to a company that maybe doesn't have someone who does Zillow leads, you know, and they're saying, okay, so we have kind of the old-fashioned way where everyone can can manage it through the LOS or manage it through an Excel spreadsheet. So I would start there first. My opinion is to start there first. Michelle, are you back yet? Or have you left us? I think she's left us. Dave, any comments there? Hello? <laughs> Gosh, we lost. I know. I'm going. We lost everybody. I'm going to put you back on mute and see if I can't get them back in. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Okay. Do we have anybody back? And maybe if uh, Mortgage Coach is listening in, you can help me out here to get those guys live again to make sure that they're. Oh, he had to leave the meeting. So that happens. That happens. Um, so, uh, Bruce, you had asked a question. Uh, you said you saw someone with my loan process sheet on Facebook and you wanted to know if I can share it again. Absolutely, I'm happy to do it. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's, again, a work in progress. So what you saw that that individual had was actually an older version. I have a newer version, which is great, but guess what? I'll have a newer version here in the next couple weeks after my halftime report. But I am happy to share that. I will upload that for everybody. Um, I'll also up upload the um, the roles that my team plays, so that you can see the the grid on that. Um, and I think that might be helpful as well, um, so that you can see who plays the role because there are some um, uh, uh, some uh, acronyms that I put in there that maybe you you all have different names on. Um, I call my production partner uh, what everyone else would call a loan officer assistant. I don't call anybody an assistant. I don't. I don't believe in that. It's um, everybody has an equal part in my my team. So yes, I'd be happy to load that up on here, and I will be happy to get that out to you guys. So thank you so much for asking for that question. Um, I really really appreciate it. Is there anybody else who has a question as we wind up? Uh, we're going to go ahead and. and um, close out the call a little bit earlier if no one has any questions and um, I hope I'm looking for hands to be raised but nobody has any so I'm hoping that um, you got at least a, a little bit out of this phone call I can tell you that I wrote a ton of notes already I cannot wait to uh, implement on my team and talk with them about earning rewards and I, I think that will help me because as David said too I I fail in doing that I tell people thank you but I don't think it's it goes deep enough, and I, I really want to n have them understand how much they really, really mean to me. And I sometimes words don't express it. Sometimes we have to do both things, and I just don't feel that I'm up to par and where I need to be in expressing to my team how how thankful I am for them. So I cannot wait to um, put some of these additional matrices and these rewards in there um, and celebrate. And I hope that you took that away as well. Um, and uh, just remind everybody, please, if you are using a CRM and you'd like to share it with us, we'd love to see the video uh, placed up on uh, Facebook, on our Facebook page. And again, invite people to this. Uh, to this, as you know, it's now open up to the Mortgage Coach community um, to uh, participate in these calls, so that we can help everyone be more productive, get get more done in less time. You know, less is more. And um, with that. We will look forward to seeing you all next week, and I, I hope you have a fantastic weekend um, and that you are very, very successful over the weekend and have some time to have some downtime to think through what you possibly could implement from this week's insane productivity call. So we'll see you all next time.